right, if you have your Bibles with you this morning, we'd ask you to turn to Psalms, Psalms chapter 29, and as you're returning there, we will again ask that you to pray always for me as your pastor, that I would know the Lord's will and the way that he should lead me, and then in that, be able to lead the church. Amen. Psalms 29 and we're going to begin reading in the very first verse. Psalms 29, in the first verse, the Bible says, this is David writing, Give unto the Lord, O ye mighty, give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the water, the waters, the God of glory thundereth, the Lord is upon many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful, the voice of the Lord is full of majesty, the voice of the Lord breaketh the cedars, yea, the Lord breaketh the cedars of Lebanon. He maketh them also to, to skip like a calf, Lebanon. And Sar and Sarian Sar Sarinian make a young unicorn, uh, like a young unicorn. The voice of the Lord divideth the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shaketh the wilderness. The Lord shaketh the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the voice of the Lord maketh the hinds to calf and discover the forest. And in his temple doth everyone speak of his glory. The Lord sitteth upon the flood, yea, the Lord sitteth king forever. The Lord will give strength unto his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you for your goodness and your watch care and all that you do for us, Lord. We thank you for meeting with your people. We're unworthy, but we praise you when you do. God, help us together that we would, uh, we would be a strength and a voice, Lord, that we'd have a desire to spread the gospel and that we wouldn't forget its power and its uh, ability to save. Help us together now as a people and meet with us. We ask these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, we're going to be preaching this morning on the voice of the Lord. Hearing the voice of the Lord, being obedient to the voice of the Lord, recognizing the voice of the Lord. Now, if you're saved, you know the voice of the Lord, and it's not audible, but you know the voice of the Lord, and you know when he speaks to you, and you know that we as his people ought to be obedient. Now, uh, I speak from personal experience, and I dare say that I'm not much different than anybody else. I'm not always obedient to that voice. The voice of the Lord should cause us to rejoice and be glad, and every time that it hasn't caused me to rejoice and be glad, and there has been times it didn't, it's because it's always because of me. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't have anything to do with the Lord. So David begins to write, and the Bible says that David is a man after God's own heart, and yet and, and still we see that uh, David's life many, many times was wretched by sin. He allowed the, the devil to, uh, to lead him astray, and he always bore the marks of those experiences. If you don't believe that, read Psalms 37, and we'll see that how his, his health was racked because of his own infidelity to his wife. And, and, and so we see then that if that is true, and David enjoyed the voice of the Lord, certainly we can too. And, and it ought to be our desire. So David begins, Give unto the Lord, O ye mighty. Now, when we think of mighty, we think of strong, and certainly David was, and he was a great warrior. But when the Lord began to use David, he wasn't that strong, mighty power. In fact, the Bible says he was just a rooty youth. 
He was just uh, he was just gangly and small, and God began to use him. And despite his condition, despite his circumstances, the call is to give praise unto the Lord, lift him up, give him give him great glory and honor. It doesn't matter if you a woman or a man or a child. We need to give glory unto the Lord. Give unto the Lord, O ye mighty. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. So we're to lift him up, shed light upon his goodness. And then I always think this is an unusual way that David uh, uh, stated this, not only give him glory, but give him strength. Now, in man's eyes, certainly God don't need our strength because he's so much stronger than us. But what we can do is give him our energy and our life. We can give him praise with what we have. We can spread the gospel uh, with what, what we have, what we have left. You know what? Uh, I see young people today that have it all set out before them and strong and mighty still in their youth and not giving one thing to the cause of Christ. And when your body becomes wrecked with disease, listen, it's done too late then. That's right. It, it's done too late. And so we see that David begins to call that we need to give more unto the Lord, and he'll outline how we're to do that. Give unto the Lord the glory due his name. Man, what a, what a statement to say, and we could never fulfill it, but give glory due his name. Honor him, lift him up, shed light on who he is, give glory to his name. You know, I have to think about this morning, what have I done today to give glory due his name? Have you used the name of the Lord Jesus Christ? Have you used the name of the God, great God Jehovah, Jehovah Jireh? Have you used the name of the Holy Ghost? And not be ashamed to say right. it. Right. You know, that person of the Godhead deserves just as much Amen. glory Amen. as the rest. We don't need to be ashamed of it. We don't need to let the holiness people take it from us. Right. But we just need to say, blessed be the name of the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's right. And so we ought to give him praise and honor due his name. And David had a wonderful understanding of that. Just if nothing else, you can see the evidence from all the songs that he wrote. Then he says, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Now that, that's the clincher, and that's the one that sets you jaw. Uh, you know, Sarah got scraped by a wire or something, and she was worried about lockjaw. And uh, we, we, we laughed about that. But a verse like that will lock the jaw. There ain't much you can say back to it. In the beauty of holiness. Uh, do we do that? Holiness uh, is a righteous people. Holiness is set apart, uh, given to the service. Uh, uh, giving yourself over to whatever his will might be done in the beauty of holiness or willingness. Are you willing to serve him? That's a beautiful thing. If you just, you know, you don't know what Hannah said concerning uh, Samuel. He said, she said, I'll give him to the Lord all the days of his life. He, she wanted him committed unto God. That's a holiness thing. Listen, we as the Lord's people, uh, you know what? Uh, this experience in the last few weeks has taught me this. We don't have, know how much time we have left here on this earth. And whatever, whatever time we have left ought to be given wholly unto God. Holiness is a necessity if we're going to do what the rest of this passage of Scripture teaches. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. Now, uh, I believe, like some believe, I mean, there's a diff couple of different ways you can interpret this, uh, that it means it's all over. It's on this land and that land. But you know what? The voice of the Lord is literally in the waters. If he sends a storm, that's a voice of the Lord. If he sends calmness and smooth sailing, that's the voice of the Lord. If he sends a raging tempest, 
That is the voice of the Lord. You remember, I guess it's been about 10 years ago now, I can't remember exactly. Uh, Baton Rouge was about uh, wiped off the map. Yeah. You know what? That was a very strong voice of the Lord. A bunch of sodomites down there, a bunch of witchcraft. And he, he was making it known, uh, I guess it's New Orleans. He was making known the voice of the Lord. Upon the waters, using the waters for his glory and for his honor, the voice of waters is very, very important, and God uses them. And, and you know, the best thing about the voice and, and having these ears the way they are, I, don't, I can't hear well anymore. Uh, to hear well, I have to look at Donna and really focus. And, um, you know, I, I laugh sometimes. Uh, the TV will be on, and she's in there mixing, and Larry, and I'm like, well, if my ears was good, I couldn't hear it. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and, but to hear her, you've got to focus. You've got to pay attention. You've got to be listening. And, and I dare say in the modern day, more problems than not. And we all know how when that clutter gets in the background. You know what our listening issue is today? There's too much clutter in the background. And listen, you know what? It, it never ceases to amaze me if something's on Facebook, they take it for the gospel truth. Yeah. You know what that is? It's just clutter. That, that's just stuff. And so we as the Lord's people, if we want to hear the Lord, we've got to listen. The God of glory thundereth. Yeah. Now, that's another aspect of God that we don't like to think about. And it's not just talking about the, the loudness of thunder. See, God's in control of every element of this earth. And if he wants to send, if he wants to send blue skies, and you know what? I'm just as sick of the rain as everybody else. But you know what? God sent it, and I just have to accept it. Somebody says, well, he sent the rain. I've got to enjoy it. No, you don't have to enjoy it. But ain't nothing going to change it, is it? See, the hardest thing what we're going to do as a people is accept God's will when it's not what we want. Just say, well, blessed be the name of the Amen. Lord. And, and, and so we find here that David, throughout his life experience, had learned this. He said sometimes the Lord's voice is so loud that it's easy to hear. The Lord is upon many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. Uh, you know, what a wonderful thing. I learned this through 26 years of ministry. When God gives you a message, the voice of the Lord is powerful. And when you've conjured it up under your own strength and, and, and you've set your thumbs mark on people and say, well, I'm going to get them today. You know what? God's not ended and his voice will not thunder. Uh, See, when we're in God's will, he'll use us. And we're not. He won't. Right. You know, I, I, I've heard people say, well, I hadn't heard from the Lord in years. And I, I used to think that's strange. But you know what? They're probably trying to tell the truth. You know why? Because they weren't listening. They, they weren't listening with a spiritual ear to see what, uh, what the Lord had given them, uh, what he had said to them. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. Majesty means kingship. Majesty means high and lifted up. It means that he's on his throne. You know, sometimes people get a little upset uh, about God's sovereignty. And, and people want to put that down in the dirt and, and say, well, that ain't how God is. Well, if he's their God, if the God of the Bible is all that he is, is waiting for you to invite him into your heart, there's no majesty to that. The majesty's in you. Yeah. Right? And, and so we find that David understood the character of God and said, says he's majestic, he, he, he's, uh, he's beautiful, he's powerful. Verse 5. The voice of the Lord breaketh the cedars. Very, very strong. Now, um, 
And I'm assuming, I don't know, that it would be a kid, you know, somewhat similar to our singers here in, 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 in America. But the thing about a cedar, and wind don't usually bother them too much because they can sway. They have a great deal of flexibility. So it takes a very strong wind to break them. And you know what? Uh, there's going to be strong winds that come and go. This, uh, you know, for some at least, this uh, virus has been a strong wind. And I believe in some situations it's broke some people. Uh, but it says here that the, the God of the Bible is a strong, strong wind. And it breaks the cedars of Lebanon. Now, if you'll study the history of Lebanon, a lot of them were heathen idolaters, and they needed to break. They needed to be done away with. They, they were a hindrance to God's people instead of an encouragement. The voice of the Lord breaketh the cedars, yea. The Lord breaketh the cedars of Lebanon. He maketh them also to skip like a calf. Now, remember, it's still the same subject. So let's talk about the cedars of Lebanon. Now, I've seen some cedars knocked down by high wind. Not many, but I've seen some. But you talking about something I've never seen? Is a cedar getting out there and skip, skip, skip to the loo, my darling. But you know what? My God can do that. I don't understand it. I've never seen it. But I know he is so powerful. If he wanted that cedar back over there to skip from here near to the belt and replay itself, that's the God of the Bible. Yeah. Yeah. He deserves our praise. We never need to forget how powerful and mighty that he is. The, and again, this is not great movement, God. It's just the voice. You know how he's, you know, when, when we read the account of the Lord's creation of this place, we forget that all he did was speak. Now the Holy Spirit moved across the waters, but all the God Jehovah did was, you know, let it be some trees over there. Let, let there be all kinds of different kind of animals. Let there be fowls in the air. And it happened. The voice of the Lord is powerful and strong and mighty. And, and, and we've got to understand that element if we're going to be led closely by the Lord. So we see calves skipping. Lebanon and Syrian like a young unicorn. So he's talking about countries, Lebanon, our city, and, and Sarayan just moving about, moving country by country, the entire thing being moved from one place to the other. You know what? It, today, this morning, if God moved Tennessee to the West Coast, we would say that's an impossibility. It can't happen. But you know what? God can. Remember what he said, the Lord Jesus said in his own ministry, he said, if you just had the faith of a mustard seed, right. you could say uh, to this mountain, be thou fence. But we don't have that kind of faith, do we? We don't see that kind of faith anymore. We don't, we don't find that obedience to the scriptures like we ought to find. We need to remember the voice of the Lord is mighty. The voice of the Lord divided the flames of fire. Now, unless it's talking about saying it in a parable, I always believe that it's exactly what it says. My God can divide a mountain of fire. His voice can speak it and it'll split open. If you don't believe that, listen, you don't believe that he parted the Red Sea and the children of Israel went across there kicking up sand on their way to the glory land. And if you don't believe that, you look up in the book of Daniel and you'll find three men that were cast in the fire. And there was a fourth man in there with him. He divided the fires. See, our God has not changed, has he? He's still the very same. And, and you know what? We may be thrown off in a fire 
are some time along the way, but it be the will of the mighty God, and that's what uh, Shadrach said, I'll come out of there again. That is the voice of God. He can do this still today. The voice of the Lord shaketh the wilderness. Now, that's another thing people all get tore up about. And the New Madrid, the New Madrid fault is not so far, about uh, 150 miles that way. Now, what if the New Madrid fall? fall what, what if we have it, uh, an earthquake like they did in 1812, 1810? Well, you know what will happen? God's in control, mm -hmm. and we may have another one, and the Cumberland River may, uh, may run backwards again for a few days, or I've often thought of this, if that ever happened again, because you know, real foot lakes happen because the uh, Cumberland River, I mean, the uh, Mississippi River ran backwards, and that creek, you know what? Just as sure as he made the real foot lake, he could empty her out again. That's right. Maybe the farmland left down there. And so we find that we have to believe in the voice of the Lord. Now, I've never heard it, except the time that he spoke life to me. He made me recognize and understand because it wasn't under my understanding to get it, that I was hopeless and helpless and on my way to a devil's hell. And he spoke life to me. See, he did the same thing Paul on the road to Damascus, did he? He spoke life to him. If you don't have an experience where Christ spoke to you when you were spoken to by the Holy Ghost, I'd make a call in you that sure. Because I would want to be sure that I had what I thought I had because it's the voice of the Almighty that changes all things. He changes a sinner into a saint because of his goodness. Verse 9, the voice of the Lord maketh the hinds, the mama cows, to calf. And, you know, we, we look at that, and we've had a lot of chicks born this year. We've had Brother Junior's little incubator at the house, and we've hatched them out and hatched them out. And you know what? If we weren't too careful, we'd say, man, we've hatched a lot of chicks this year. No, the Almighty did, did he not? Because, you see, there's several that didn't hatch. You see what I'm saying? And you could say, well, they wasn't fertilized. Or you can say, well, they, they just wasn't strong enough. No, what happened was God did not will that that thing live, and so it didn't. It didn't happen. And, and, and so we as the Lord's people, uh, we need to understand. And that's why I can't understand interrupting pregnancies in this filth we call abortion. Because, see, you're going against God in every way. And... and uh, trying to outsmart and outwill the hand of the Almighty. The voice of the Lord maketh the hinds to calf and discovereth the force, and in his temple doeth every one speak of his glory. Now, you get that because, you know, ain't nothing wrong with it, but, you know, a lot of times we come in here and we just visit and laugh and come up, but this says we should come up here and, and begin to speak of his glory. You know, say, so you know what? I haven't been hungry this week. God has provided every meal for me. Amen. I've had something to eat. And you know what? I've had something to drink. And the roof didn't leak. All of it's his glory and honor. Amen. And you know what? We just become to expect it. Amen. You know, if it was taken away for a little while, we'd learn to appreciate it, wouldn't Amen. we? Uh, a couple times, and unfortunately, Mom was easy going. Sometimes I think she was too easy going with me. And uh, but there's a couple times she took to the keys of the car and said, "You ain't going." And you know, so sometimes he ought to take the keys away from us, and then we'd appreciate it the next time we got in there. We'd appreciate it, and so we find then that this wonderful, marvelous God that we serve, that everything is under the voice of his speaking. Everything is under his ability. Verse 10, the Lord sitteth upon the flood. Uh, 
You know, I love that, and I think about the flood of Noah, and you know what? There was God right on top of it. And as the mountains washed away, and the people screamed for their lives, and the fountains of the deep shot up, there was God above it all. See, we need to worship him like we believe that, do we not? <clears throat> that he literally not only spoke the flood, because he, he said, no, man, it's going to rain. But he also was above it. See, God is always above his own judgment. And if that weren't so, how would he give? How would he be right to give it? How would he be right to cast judgment if he wasn't, in fact, above us and better than us and higher than us in every way that we could think? The Lord will give strength unto his people. Now, if you don't get anything else out of the message this morning, if you're if you're wavering on the vine and you as you start and you know what? In the ministry I have seen so many come and go. But I do know this the Lord, the Lord will give strength to those that are his. And the fakes and the ones that do not, you know what? They'll waver on the vine. They'll dry up. They'll be gone. They'll no longer be present. And you know why? Because the strength is, is promised to us. It's not promised to them. It's not given to them. And so we find then, as the Lord's people, if we're still abiding in the faith, we need to give him praise for his strength, the voice of the Lord. The Lord will give strength unto his people. The Lord will bless his people with what? Peace. Yeah, you ever seen people that live in misery? You know, all I can come to is they don't have the peace of God. Worried about food, worried about COVID, worried about, uh, about storms, literally earthly storms when we just read he's in the wind Amen. we ought to give him praise for that not to be fearful of but give him great praise and so we find then that the Lord he's worthy of our praise he's worthy to be lifted up and what we need to begin to do is listen for his voice listen to him speak to you Listen for him to guide you. Listen for him to tell you what's next. Hear the voice. And listen, uh, a lot of people say, you know what? We're living in the last times, blah, 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 and all the fear and dread that comes from that. But you know what? I cannot believe that the Lord has quit speaking. Uh, I believe he's still guiding. And if I didn't believe that, I'd give up myself. But see, this I know he spoke to me. This I know he still speaks to me. The voice of the Lord is very familiar to me. And, and so we need to follow him just in that way. Now go with me to the Gospel of John. The Gospel of John chapter uh, 16. Fairly familiar verses of scripture. Sometimes I think they're kind of taken out of context. But fairly familiar verses of scripture. Uh, 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 the Gospel of John, chapter 16, and we'll begin reading in verse 29. Uh, the Gospel of John, chapter 16, and verse 29. His disciples, not everyone, his disciples said unto him, Lo, now, thou, uh, no, now speakest thou plainly, and speakest no proverb. In other words, he was becoming very plain with them, very direct. And you know what? They heard it. They, they were listening. They heard it. Now we are sure that thou knowest all things, and needest not that any man should ask thee. By this we believe that thou, that thou camest forth from God. And Jesus answered them, Do you now believe? You know what? Uh, do you, do you ever wonder if God kind of does that to you? Do you now believe? Do you believe I'm going to still meet with you? Do you believe where two or three are gathered together in my name? They're in the middle. They're in the midst. I will be with them. Do thou believe? 
Do thou believe that God's people are a people that's chosen by him? Do you believe that, that God still has the power of all the elements? Do you believe it? And, and see, we find here that to ask this, there's one or two things that, that was necessary. One of these two, one or two things, number one, either the Lord wanted to ask them to ask themselves that. Do you believe? Or he doubted their belief. One or the other, right? And, and so we find here, uh, <laughs> Did they believe his voice? Did they believe what he was saying unto them? Uh, verse 32, Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone, and yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. Now, I want you to see, he says, listen, you're fixing to be scattered. You're fixing to go for, you're fixing to, you're fixing to uh, uh, forsake me. You're fixing to leave me. And you know what I've found in, 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 is this, when you're by yourself, is the real test of your faith. When you're by yourself, do you pray? When you're by yourself, do you cry out to God? When, when you're by yourself, do you sing praises unto him? When you're by yourself. Because, see, when you're alone, that's really who you are. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love good fellowship. And we're going to have fellowship here in a week or so. But I'd rather commune with the Lord, hadn't you? And since... He sent us a comforter to communion with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Means communion with the Holy Ghost. That's the only thing you can do. Because Jesus is at the right hand of the Father. Right? Yeah. And, and, and so we find then as the Lord's people that that we, we sometimes are the very ones that leave. Verse 33. These things have I spoken to you, spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace. And in Christ. You know what? You're not going to have peace in this world in yourself. You know what? You're not even going to have peace in the church. Now, I've been through some rough things. I mean, that church split at Bumpus Mills about maybe want to hang my hat on the door. But you know what? God was in it. And my peace was not even found in my wife. It wasn't found in my children. It was found in my God. And that's the peace. Listen, if you can have close fellowship and you can hear from him, then that's the peace that you stand in need of. Yeah, it might look scary to the flesh, but your peace is in God. In the world, ye shall have tribulation. That's a promise. It's the word of God. It's just as it's just as much as uh, the word of God is by grace are you saved through faith. It is the word of God. And he says here, ye shall have tribulation. Listen, you know what? Everybody in this bill, not one of us really knows what tribulation is. You may have tasted a little bit of it, but listen, you haven't seen. You know, you have you know what happened in the what will happen in the great tribulation? The Bible, the way I understand it, is even the elements, the sun, will have its vengeance upon the earth, and the government will run over them rough shod. See, you think you have a little rough spot, you ain't seen nothing yet. But he makes us that promise. He says, listen, you're going to have tribulation, and in that tribulation, are you listening to the voice of the God, of the God of the Bible, or is the tribulation sweeping you away? And, and a lot of times I find myself in the swept away than the other. In this world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. What a wonderful, blessed truth. Uh, can you hear his voice. You know the voice of the Lord. Acts 27. Acts 27. I think I read this in your hearing uh, on uh, Wednesday night. Acts 27, verse 22. Acts 27, verse 22. Uh, Paul uh, 
Luke writing the record of, of Paul. Now I exhort you to be of good cheer. Now, let me set the stage for you in case you don't remember from Wednesday night. They was they, the ship wasn't going either way. It wasn't going forward. It wasn't going backwards. They were stuck. Ever had your car stuck? It used to happen to me a lot more when I was younger than it does now. Maybe we got a little bit better car than we used to. But you always had to cipher some way to get it to get it out, didn't you? But we we find here that that the, in this calamity, in this situation where they were not moving either way, they were right there in the middle, not going forward and not going back. Have you ever thought what the worst part of this shipwreck was? I'll say this, little or no water. Because, see, you can't drink seawater. It will kill you. And so all the Maritimes of that day would take good fresh water with them. And they rationed it out. And no doubt it was running slim because they were done in there two weeks than they th two more weeks than they thought they would be. And, and they still weren't moving any any direction at all. And in the midst of this calamity, in the midst of not, not being able to do nothing, Paul says of them, be of good cheer. You know what I said to you this morning? Be of good cheer. Be happy. Be glad in the Lord. The voice of the Lord is a great encouragement. Be of good cheer. And so Paul's message was very simple. Now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. In other words, don't worry about the structure. God is with us individually. Don't worry about where you meet. Worry about your position with the Lord God. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God has given thee all the men that sail with thee. Now, I want you to really get that. Because in the midst of calamity and looking at certain starvation and, 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 and thirsting to death, God said, listen, I, I've got it taken care of, Paul. Uh, you know, that's a mighty God, isn't it? That, that's a mighty God when it looks like there is nothing left to do. He said, I'm with you. Yeah. And, and you know how, how God accomplished this? I will always remember this from Brother Downs, if nothing else. He said, God works by means. God always works by means. He sent another storm. He didn't excuse them. He, he didn't, uh, in man's eyes, do anything miraculous. But he did. And the storm shoved them toward that little island. Took the ship down, just like, just like it was promised. And they got them aboard, each one aboard, piece of the ship, and they got onto the island. See, uh, God will accomplish His will. And, and so, in the midst of calamity, what I tell you is be of good cheer. There is a way. God, uh, the voice of the Lord is still present. He's still talking to His people, even in this last day. The Gospel of Matthew. And we're going to close. Matthew 14. Matthew 14, and uh, we'll begin reading in verse 25. Matthew 14, in verse 25, But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. Now, I want you to see that the voice of the Lord came unto them first, because remember what they said? They said, It's a spirit. They, they couldn't see over there. They, the waves had them damned. And all they could come up with, it is a spirit. And in the middle of the calamity, the wind and the waves and, and this voice speaking to them, they said, he said, it is I, be not afraid. You know, some of the, 
some of the most difficult requests he'll ever make from you is don't be scared. I've got this. Don't be afraid. Uh, yeah, have you ever wondered what, why he don't want us to be afraid? Well, I can tell you this. When we're not afraid, or when we are afraid, we'll count on something else. If you don't believe that, Look at the coronavirus, right? You know why people quit meeting? They were afraid. It wasn't, it wasn't all about the government. You know, uh, we're not supposed to fear death. Do you ever think about that? We really are. What if the worst thing happened with corona and every one of us died? What a great, wonderful victory. <laughs> right? Either you believe it or not. And, and, and so we find then that as the Lord Jesus is walking on the scene, he said, don't you be afraid. The, the voice of the Lord Jesus Christ comes across to them and says, don't you be afraid. Don't you be scared. Don't you be worried. I've got this. Be of good cheer. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, they still couldn't see him. They still, they still just could hear the voice. Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, come. And so Peter gets down off the boat and begins to walk across the sea, right into the Lord Jesus Christ. And then, then the old storm, he, he, he heard that over there. Maybe he looked. And then he saw the wave about to crash down on him. Lord, help. See, um, we need to listen to the voice of the Lord. What was the last word that Jesus said to Paul? Come. Did he disobey that? After he got out there a few feet, he did. And, uh, you know, I, I see that a lot in the Lord's people. They'll make three or four steps. And they're always me. This is scary. This is the real deal. You know, uh, I've said probably more than half my ministry watched the government. And when we got our first little test of it, and, and thankful to this church, hey, we didn't do it. But 99% of the churches in our land, and you know what? Just about all except for us, of our type of churches, they did exactly. That's pretty scary, ain't it? Where is the voice? Do you still hear him? Lord saved me 40 years ago almost. And you know I rejoice that I can still hear it from time to time. And, and a lot of times it's flaring, you're messing up. But oh, what a wonderful thing even that is. You know when you hear from the Lord, even rebuke sounds good, don't it? really does. We just need to listen. We live in a day and age where we need to train ourselves to listen. You know, uh, there was a girl in, at work, and I won't say her name, but she always talks like this. She, she talks louder than I preach. And uh, so she made a comment the other day, and I thought, yeah, I know what your problem is, and I wanted to hand her one of mine. She goes, since people are wearing masks, I can't understand them anymore. You know what she's doing? She's matching to what little bit she heard with what their mouth was doing. And she couldn't, she couldn't understand people anymore. You know what? I believe we, in a spiritual sense, get to that, don't you? All the calamity around us stuff seemingly to fall apart. When all we need is just listen to the voice. Do you still hear him? You hear him speak to you? 